we're going to look at the next melee. We'll do Div Divine Crusader. Okay, Divine Crusader has a great epic strike called Consecration. And the, all of this stuff works based on Sunder, so we're going to boost the Sunder TCs. Oh, we don't want that. We want the Mantle. There's the Holy Mantle. That's increasing our damage in the Holy Mantle. You gain Smite Evil. Yeah, we'll take that. We don't have a shield. That's good. Don't really care about that, although it's good. Don't care about that. It's good. Being struck has a chance to regenerate a smite evil. We're not going to worry about that. Consecrate. Uh, burns enemies that stand inside it. Yes. Uh, select a religion. We're using short swords and we're a drow, so Valkor. True seeing, immune to blindness. We already have true seeing from our gear, so. Uh, this is huge right here. Critical hit damage, critical hit confirmation. Yes, absolutely. And we do have power critical, so that's going to be doubled. We want that because that boosts the mantle. We want double strike. We want consecration to stun. Improved Sunder, we will take if we have the points to take it. Smite Evil buffs with... We have no religious lore feats, so that one would be useless for us. But if we have a point left over, we'll take it. Weapon attacks apply vulnerability, and if shields now consider... Okay, we're not using a shield, so it doesn't really matter. But we do like vulnerability we don't have embodiment of law unfortunately so oh you gain the embodiment of law feat if you don't have it if you have it you deal extra law damage it's only one point so we'll gain it so now we have the embodiment of law feat Yes, we want that. Yes, we want that. So I still have three points. So let's finish this. And then... We might as well make it so that our, our smites regenerate. That looks good. We have almost everything here. Smite Evil applies a Crusader buff. It's just plus one armor class and plus one PRR for every two religious lore feats. And we don't have religious lore, so it would only be plus one, plus one. So we really wouldn't be missing a lot by not using that. So I don't feel that bad missing. Alright, so there's our consecration. There's our holy mantle. Okay. This is our epic moment. We're not using this stuff because we're just testing these. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is pin. Probably pin trip here. And we have an attack. So let's go pick it up. So, same thing. Char and Welcome R1. Doing it exactly the same way. No hires, just me. Going through to see how good all of the damage is, how good the CC is. We're just using the Fey weapon. 
same exact gear that I have on, basically. I'm wearing a five-piece Saltmarsh Explorer set with a couple of crafted pieces. Uh, I'll go over the, my gear later once we're done doing these tests, once we, I get back into my regular build. All right, and so for this here, we're going to trance up and speed boost and basically just wait for everything to come to us and then I'm going to roar at it and we're going to try to consecrate it down. All right, so there we go. Now here's my epic strike and now I'm going to burn this stuff down. The damage looks really good. The damage looks about the same as the others. Actually, it may be a little bit higher than the other destinies. My base damage is what I mean. My base damage was about 250 in the others, and in this one it appears to be about 300. So it looks like my base damage is a little bit better. And I'm cowering these mobs, although it's unfortunate it doesn't last that long, but... So he got hit for almost 5,000. I think the cower built into Consecrate is only... So it's healing us. It's damaging them. But it only cowers them for four seconds, which is, you know, it's nice, but it's not that long. This looks more it would be like really cool if it were like a 15 second stun or something like that. Like that would be really cool, but transformed it into his place of business. Still, we're we'll take it. It'll it'll help us. So that's another crowd control basically. Right? So I just basically jump over these. There it is, and all of them are stunned. How awesome is that? That is super strong. That is super strong, because now I can follow that up with a Dragon Roar. And look at my base damage. My base damage, well, I saw a couple that were low, but I think those were grazing hits. The base damage appears to be around 300, 290, 300, and that's a little bit more than the other Destinies. But the difference is, I noticed that there's a lot more burst in Fate Singer, probably because of rain. And in my normal build, I'm using Quick Cuts, which is, you know, I mean, that's new and that's really strong. But, but this is really good damage. And the fact that it puts the Consecration on the ground and I can stand in it and get heals. So I'm just going to Consecrate the ground here. They're all stunned. And we're just bursting them down. 5,000... So this feels really close to uh, what we did uh, in my build. Like, so I think so far, based on everything that I've tried, I probably, if I weren't playing my build the way it is, I probably would do this. All right, so there's a roar. And we're going to do an epic strike on the ground right here. There it is. Everything in it. Well, not everything, but most everything was stunned. And roar. And the damage. Okay, so 270 I'm seeing. So I would say, yeah, the damage is the same. Just a little bit less bursty, but it's still really good. Like that, look at that. I just hit him for like 4,000 three times in a row. Nothing was as bursty as Fate Singer. Fate Singer is very, like, if you want to see procs of like 10 to 12,000, but that's that, that's rain. That's basically like, you know, random. Okay, there's my roar. And gonna consecrate. There's my consecrate. Everything is pretty much done. Not everything, but most everything is stunned. And you know that that's DC based, so I could work on getting my Sunder DCs higher. 
I got commanded, so. Got commanded again. You can keep yourself from getting commanded with protection from evil. Okay. But I'm not wearing protection from evil. Like, that was really good, really fast. We're gonna jump over these, turn around, Rubble blocks the and then roar. As well as the nearby door. You won't be getting up to the terrace this way. I want to kill this beast mark. So here's my epic strike. Now the epic strike did not stun any of them. I don't know why. Maybe it was a bug because there was a little bit of lag, but Okay, I'm gonna strike on this light bearer right here. So he saved. But the damage on him looks really good. I like this mantle too because we're immune to petrification. Uh, it made our weapon into a holy weapon. And so as we head into the last fight, I ha I'm i going to use the shrine just because I want to get all six of my second wins. Okay, there's our trance. We're going to pop our our haste and our epic moment. And now we're going to try to take out this sorcerer before he kills me. Alright, Zork is dead. I'm going to roar at this champ right here. Try to take it out. Okay, got that champ. Going to hit my renewal. I uh, have probably second wind. Okay, just second winded. This is my epic strike on everything. I'm gonna try to burn down the trash. Okay, and now let's get rid of these two here. Gonna roar to get that trigger man. Okay, got him. And now it's just these two. So here's my epic strike on it. I have to do a second wind. The heal from this Consecrate is, is not as big as I would like to see. I mean, it's nice to have, but... Use the second wind. So I don't feel as squishy as I did, but it's still taking a lot. second wind again. Did my trance and my speed boost again. Hopefully I can get the clan leader dead. 
Okay, clan leader's dead. Now I can focus on the dinosaur. I'm basically just going to do some DDO trickery as I fight this thing and do a little bit of jumping because if you don't know, like melee attacks can be dodged. So if I jump, it'll basically keep him from hitting me as much. If you just stand there, uh, it you get hit a lot easier. So That's why you see a lot of players playing DDO jumping around like Jack X jackasses in case you were wondering like why don't they stay still and play like every other normal video game ddo has like a built-in physics system that's a little bit different than uh other games so you're kind of encouraged to like while we do have a dodge mechanic uh a tump by you can tumble the dodge is automatic so it's not like you actually actually have to dodge like other games where you would do like a time dodge, but in this game here, you can, you know, alter the mob's ability to hit you by moving around. So if you do this like sort of jump strafing that I'm doing here, you can still hit them, but it makes it harder for them to hit you. So if you're squishy, it's, it's a good tactic. But, you know, I mean, I don't need to do it that much. I still have one second wind, and it's a little bit harder to watch. But you can see, like, the damage. The damage looks really good. It's a li it's slightly higher than the other Destinies, but not enough that I would feel like it has an advantage. But I would say it probably felt like the easiest, except for my build. So I think Divine Crusader is really good if you can take advantage of it. And I didn't even use like the um I have a message for you. The smite evil or whatever it is. It gave right here this smite evil. I could have used it, but I forgot to pin it. You're just setting yourself up for a fall. Vaughn's companion makes a gesture, and the terrace collapses beneath you. That would have just increased our damage a little, but the trip, you know, we have a decent trip, even though they make their saving throws in here, because they have a lot of really high saves. Three hundred thirty-five thousand plat. 